Atheist Nomads episode 423. Is it backfiring? The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin and joining me is Lauren. Yay, hello. And this is something that Lauren thought we should talk about after some feedback that came on a really old episode on YouTube. Like hilariously old. That was deleted before I got to deleting them because of way too much personal stuff about not either of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if y'all remember a uh, uh, previous co-host of Dustin's, uh, Wesley, who was part of the show for quite some time, um, somebody was angry with him and left some comments. So, a little inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But she made some points. The big one being worth talking about, because it actually is interesting, is the claim that she made the claim that, and that episode was specifically a interview with Lilith Starr from the Satanic Temple in Seattle. And the claim was that several. Um, the biggest one is that specifically what the Satanists are doing is backfiring and is why we're getting stuff like Texas's new abortion ban. Basically, if you poke the bear, yeah, aka the government, uh, it's going to swipe uh, uh, back. The religious right. The religious right. Yeah. And uh, it'll, it'll, it's like a pendulum, you know, it'll, it'll swing back at you. Um, and that's, that's a valid point. A lot of people would think that would agree with that that aggravating the religious right only makes things harder for everybody else Mm -hmm. so what do you do now i i look at that oh she also made and and the easier one to address was she also made the claim that lilith star and other people in the satanic temple are acting like criminals by using fake names. Well, anybody who ever everybody's a criminal in some aspect and there are just certain certain areas where one should not use their own personal identity. Yeah. As a host to an atheist podcast, I'm surprised at Dustin. There but is a reason most people would go with the a, a celebrity name. Yeah. Uh no illusions from Scathing Atheist. He has mentioned his real name on his podcast once. When he felt bad for hiding behind a pseudonym when so many atheists are out in public fighting the good fight with their real names. Yeah, his threat model was that he was in uh, he was at risk. So he dealt with that. Now he has kept using the pseudonym because that is the pen name. Well, now it's branding. The the, the 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 stage name for the podcast. Yeah. So he has stuck with that. So nothing uh, criminal there. Lucian Greaves is not the actual name of the head of the Satanic Temple. That is the name he uses publicly for good reason. Yeah, can you imagine the death threats that a Satanist yeah. or even just an atheist gets? Now, when I started blogging, I made a point of only using my first name. And it was my first guest appearance on Chariots of Iron way back in 2010, they put my last name in the show notes. I never intentionally gave them my last name. I never intentionally said to use my last name. I was trying to keep my last name out of it. They got it from my email, put it in the show notes. And I was like, well, all right, cat's out of the bag. I mean, not really, since you hadn't, he, he, they hadn't said it out loud on the show. If I had thought about it a oh, little well, more, okay. I would have just been like, hey, could you remove that? But yeah, that well, would have been an easy edit. Instead, I just went with it. You also have a very common name. Right. I, I am subscribed to... You get news alerts to your name all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, am, I am subscribed to Google Alerts on my name, Dustin Williams. And I never show up in that. No. There are other Dustin Williamses who do, like the superintendent of public education for Pima County in Arizona. There you go. Dustin Williams. He's in the news all the time. Oh, we'd like to meet him. Shake his hand. Yeah, hey. he's pretty hey, cool. Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Uh, there's Dustin Williamses that show up in uh, uh, obituaries all the time. Well, that's a really common. One. Anyway, common that's name. getting beside the point. Um, is this backfiring? I am going to jump out on a limb and say, small picture. Nobody gives a shit about Satanists. And you no big picture. No little the, the little picture. Okay, this is actually going to be well, true for all of okay, them. Yeah, I guess you have to explain what you mean by that then. 
Um, little pictures in short term, what's going on right now? Okay. Nobody gives a shit about the Satanic Temple. Nobody gives a shit about atheists, unless they're being actively sued by one of those groups. Right. It's not that they, that the religious right hates us. They literally don't give a shit about us. They hate gay people. The gay rights movement, the advances for gay rights, has been the big rallying cry that has driven the rise of the modern merger of conservative politics and conservative uh, religion. Right. And the only reason why Satanists are relevant is because they piggyback on the human rights of other people. Yes. Which is the whole point of the organization, which is awesome, and everybody should support them. Um, Where the Satanic Temple becomes relevant is atheists, by definition, can't make the positive religious liberty claim. You have no standing if you don't believe in nothing. Right. So you have to come up with something. And it's a stretch for humanists to do that. It's a lot easier for somebody who's saying they're Satanist to say this is part of their satanic rituals. And we've got a story coming up relevant directly to that. Yeah. Uh, because it gets the attention. It becomes a, a keeping, it, keeping whatever it is relevant, whether it's rights to abortion, mm -hmm. um, whether it's... Uh, the invocation equal, equal, uh, equal, what is that called? Equal, equal rights, uh, equality, the invocation where everybody gets involved, where everybody gets a chance to do an invocation, um, at, at in a government building. That's, that's a big one. Too. Yeah. Is you have your Methodists, you have your Episcopalian, and then you have random Satanists will show up and do the invocation and right. like, hooray. And yeah, people throw fit, but the people that throw fit, they're nobodies. Like uh, when, when a, a Hindu from, I think it was Reno, came up and did the invocation at the Idaho State Legislature. There were three members of the Idaho State House of Representatives who sat it out because they were offended that a polytheist would be giving the invocation. I'd love to see what their reaction was to the Satanists who did it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> They probably were not there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I haven't seen it in the news. Oh, you didn't see that? Nope. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised I did. Well, I've been a little out of it lately. I should have sent it to you. Uh, but that's only because I follow them on Facebook. Oh, okay. They're and right. I don't do Facebook. I know. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, oh, believe me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in the small picture, the right wing is, they use abortion as a easy target to dr drum up the base. Uh, abortion is not a religious issue outside of Catholics. It is a political wedge issue created to be a political wedge issue that politics got pushed into evangelical doctrine. Yeah, I'm showing Dustin a picture of the Satanists at the uh, Idaho Capitol with the priest behind them praying. Nice. And people praying to their rosary beads and their crosses. Oh wow, that's it's awesome. It's fantastic. That is Sorry, awesome. I just he can't get a he can't get away with not knowing about these guys. All right. Sorry, totally derailed you. So small picture though, it's those are the those are the the, the political the issues of really of interest to atheists typically on um what the, the right cares about. It's women and gay people. Whoop whoop. It's not atheists. Nope, but it gives Satanist. atheists a voice. Now, a atheists... Pseudo voice? Pseudo? The atheist movement has been wildly successful at getting attention and becoming normalized. Becoming a part of society. I disagree, but I'll let you say it. You disagree? I do. I think um, what we saw here in Boise in particular with the Idaho atheists... Uh, was definitely a uh, normalization of atheists being out in the open. But when it comes to protections and or equal representation, it is completely dis completely lacking. That's not what I was referring to. Okay. Uh, I was talking about when it comes up in conversation at work, you are, if you get asked about your belief and you say you're an atheist, you are more likely now to get indifference than proselytizing i'm not saying you're not going to get proselytized but you're there's a lot less of that now than there was 10 years ago there's 
atheists marching in a parade don't get as many boos <laughs> as they used to. Portrayal in media. Oh, yeah. The nerd atheist on TV shows is like a total trope now. Atheists have become more normalized. Yeah. Atheists do not have the representation they should. No. And are not taken seriously by political parties like oh, we absolutely, should for absolutely the not. size of a voting block as we are. When the latest demographic data and, and Pew data suggests that we absolutely are a voting block. Oh, huge. And a large voting block. Way bigger than the Jews. Way bigger. Way bigger than most minorities. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take people who are already in office who lack belief to come out and say it, be open about it, mm -hmm. and nonchalantly just let it go. Um, while at the same time, we need a few of those little buggers who show up who run as Satanists or as atheists, and that is like their whole thing, just to get people riled up. Because yeah. It works for the it works for the uh, religious right. Remember what's his name? Uh, pro life. It'll be yeah, yeah. That that's the <laughs> kind of somebody who changed legally changed their name to pro life just to run for elections. That's the kind of crap we need. And specifically to run for governor of Idaho. No, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so little picture, nothing is backfiring on us. As Nothing is backfiring on atheists or Satanists. In the medium-sized picture, talking decades rather than years, uh, the modern conservative movement has only been around since about 1980. It is younger than the modern gay rights movement and has been picking up steam. It is about as uppity years. as you would expect for something that young. Right. It is a young movement trying to redefine American politics, and it is primarily political and conveniently religious. What sucks is the religious part of that ends up being where they're the wedge issue they were using to try to get conservative Catholics to join this conservative movement. They got wedged into evangelicalism, and now they're trying to attack abortion at every step. Yeah. In every state and at the federal level and in the courts. Uh, we will soon be seeing probably not direct. Actually, no, we probably will soon be seeing direct attacks on same sex marriage and attempts to overturn that, as well as enshrining Christian privilege to discriminate against gay people. Uh, that is actively happen, actively developing. And but it is a. It's primarily a political movement where a lot of the most obvious things to what we look at are the religiously motivated hate. Right, because it's usually centered around some kind of human rights. Yeah. Which is kind of our, you know, kind of our thing. When you look at the really big picture, this isn't just an American thing. It's happening in Brazil. It's happening in the Philippines, Greece, Italy. And there aren't Satanists in those countries that are... No, uh, not that act the same as the yeah. American ones. Yeah. So you can't say that they're caught making things worse in the big picture because this stuff is happening all over the world. It's a global trend, not we just happen to have one of the most famous examples as a head of state. <laughs> right. And if, if, if it hadn't been Trump, Bolsonaro or Duarte would have been the most famous. Right. It would have ever. Those guys are bad bad jujus and this this modern you know and, and what's one thing that is fascinating is in a lot of these countries the the not u.s countries the far right wing neo-fascist political movement is inherently and explicitly non-religious and in some cases actively hostile to religion in the u.s it just happened to go the opposite and merged with a religious group they both benefit christian privilege but in different ways uh really big picture yeah the religion isn't the big the big angle it's new autocratic regimes human rights are not good for dictatorships so trying to suppress and do a, do away with human rights protections and gay people are the easy target they're all using putin is going after them hungry gay people and foreigners and women women are a little touchy though because women's is almost the 
the fight for women's equal rights has been such a long one mm-hmm. that I think people are kind of embarrassed to be sexist nowadays. Yeah. Misogynism is kind of a bad label, but they still turn around and keep doing it this over and over again anyway. Um, but that's what you get when you have been suffering from e- for e- uh, from inequality for so long that you and you keep getting put on the back burner. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not to say that, you know, foreigners and gays also deserve equal rights. They all do. But yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. And in the really big picture, it's it's immigration and refugees and the instability in the Middle East and climate instability. And yeah, a lot of people want equal rights for everybody in their own country, Uh huh. but they don't want to extend that to foreigners. Yeah. So that's an easy other group to attack. And then, of course, there's the people within your own society who you think are somehow denigrating your society. You got to attack those somehow. All right, then. So the really big picture, atheists and Satanists aren't even a blip on the radar. That doesn't mean that what we do doesn't matter. Exactly. Because if you don't keep fighting for even just some basic common sense Uh rule and law, then you'll keep back. They'll just keep backsliding and you'll lose in the long run. Absolutely. So is it backfiring? No. Are a lot of things bad? Yes. Never give up. And we need to keep up the fight. Yeah. We're going to cover the main feedback later in the episode, but if you want to contact us, we have a nice handy contact form on the website. All right. There's also a speak pipe button. Ooh, you can record You can, can leave record a voicemail, your, own vo- your own message. Nice. It's also really easy to uh, use the the voice memo app on your iPhone or similar recorder on an Android device and email it to feedback at atheistnomads.com or just type it out. It all works great. We love getting feedback. (laughs) Even if you do name names and go off on an old co-host. In response to a very old episode. We'll still get to it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, we also have a upcoming launch. What? Yes. We are finally getting merchandise. Oh my God. Oh my God. I need a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> In order to launch. You oh need a yeah. So, yeah. Poof, poof. I saved it, Dustin, from a t-shirt cannon once. It's one of my greatest stories. And one of my most embarrassing. Batted uh, it right out from in front of his face. It was great. We are finally, after I've been wanting to have shirts for years and years and years, uh, we finally have a store launching next week uh, with shirts and stickers and mugs and magnets. It's one of those deals. You just stick the picture on anything and everything you can imagine. Yep. And they'll print it if you order it. it. It's great. Yeah. So we'll have all the details at launch next week. Um, but this is just a little teaser. All right. For our first news story, we've got one of the main leaders in the Miracle Mineral Solution cult. <laughs> what? Miracle Mineral Solutions? Is this literally water? No, it's bleach. Oh my. Oh, fuck that guy. All right. Yeah. This is, we, we've talked about this quite this is the various stories have come up many times. It started out as a um, quote unquote sacrament to cure autism. I remember that now. Yep. And they claimed that these kids were shitting out the demons. When, no, that was their intestinal lining because they drink, were forced to drink bleach. Uh, with the pandemic, of course, they've been touting Miracle Mineral Solution as a COVID preventative and treatment which got them shut down in the u.s but not elsewhere in the world that's just just insane that's just oh god yeah the one of the main leaders is a german by the name of andreas kalker uh who is probably in switzerland right now uh hiding more or less uh in a recent trip he made uh he went to Argentina and was 
helping encourage having kids drink bleach. This is it's just insane. Mentally unwell. Absolutely insane. Uh, in August of last year, uh, because of course legal cases take forever, especially when they involve a foreign national. Um, this trip was, yeah, last year, and a five-year-old boy in Western Argentina. Uh, died of multiple organ failure after being forced to drink Miracle Mineral Solution or Industrial Strength Bleach. The parents believed, per what they were being told by Kalker and others, that this would ward off COVID-19. So the authorities launched a seven-month-long investigation and have formally filed charges against Kalker. There's a part of me who feels like if you fall for the snake oil salesman then you just you're, you're just bringing it on yourself but when people honestly believe this stuff mm -hmm. like really do there's no skepticism whatsoever they actually believe this stuff and do it to their kids little kids yeah highly aged kids and make them go through that kind of terrible pain and torture yeah for that's why we have laws. Is we have laws to protect idiots. Because half of the laws out there are to protect idiots. Idiots and un uneducated. Uh, from you know these yeah. criminally negligent. Even if he is a believer of his own stuff, I bet he's not drinking bleach. He has been charged with the illegal practice of medicine and selling fake medicines. Yep. Because he's not a doctor. No. Nope. And bleach is not a medicine. <laughs> no. No matter what Trump said, it is not a medicine. No. It does not go inside the body. No. If he ever steps foot in Argentina again, he will be looking at spending 25 years in prison. <sighs> Too bad they can't extradite. Not from Switzerland. Nope. He's, he's not dumb. Nope. And I'm sure the FDA is like... The FDA investigation into his florida church uh like it was an invest fda investigation that went to the u.s marshal service for like going the criminal direction not the civil direction and right. uh it really would not surprise me if there are warrants waiting for him in the u.s too oh yeah he can't step foot in the u.s he needs to stay in a very very neutral. Small list of countries that don't extradite. <laughs> it's like a, you can count on your hand. The ones that Nazis hit out in. Oh, wait, no. That was Argentina. No, oh, he got busted there. That was Argentina. Don't burn bridges, dude. Don't burn your bridges. <laughs> uh, Dave Dobbenmeyer is a right-wing religious radical activist, pastor, evangelist, prophet, coach, asshole. Um, coach Dave is what he... At various points has gone by. God. Uh, he has a persona. Yeah. Uh, in his, his latest round of craziness, uh, on his Pass the Salt Live program, uh, he presented his $100 million plan. He's going to wage culture war with a lot of money to uh, fight anti-Christian but what he views as anti-Christian bias and promote uh, Christian conservative uh, candidates for public office. Right, because that's what we need more of. And you want to guess how he's going to do it? Well, I'm going to guess it's going to involve a lot of donations. Nope. Oh? No, no. His plan is to find all the companies that donated money to Black Lives Matter and then start badgering them about what they're doing to protect Christians from persecution. Mm hmm. And discrimination. Right, because some people just cannot get off that. And then accuse them of being anti Christian and call them the Antichrist if they don't give him as much money as they gave Black Lives Matter. Poo boy. All right, how's that going for him? Well, it, it, he's just getting started, well, so we don't have any it's numbers be hilarious yet. Hilarious to watch. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to guess he'll probably get some money from Hobby Lobby. If he even yeah. tries to get any from them. They didn't give to Black Lives Matter. But he might try and get some donations from somebody to that might actually give him money. Uh, but no. I he, guess you can say he's trying to blackmail them. Yeah, he's not going to get any. Blackmail. <laughs> no. uh, he's not going to get any money. 
If he does, it's going to be nothing. What sucks is he's going to get some money. And that's money I could use. <laughs> Donald Trump is starting to hint at a 2024 run for president. Ugh. Why is this guy still relevant? So, of course, he's, he's forming his exploratory committees. Okay. Well, except, no, that's how a actual normal campaign would work. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's starting off with a new faith advisory board. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. He's really scraping the bottom of the barrel for this one, isn't he? So, Paula White. You guys still like me, right? <laughs> Paula White, Trump's uh, f- former, you know, head of, of the White House faith-based office and uh, evangelical megachurch pastor and, you know, crazy blowhard. Uh, Nobody misses her held a conference call with the quote-unquote 70 executives. Uh, These are the heads of 70 different conservative religious groups. And not not necessarily the heads of the groups, but at least high enough ranking people to be willing to join in. Uh, So your normal, what you would expect from evangelical denominations and not official Catholic organizations and some bizarre Jewish groups and yeah. And the end result is it looks like they're going to keep holding these, these meetings every so often. Of course. Got to keep up appearances. Yeah. Uh, They did. uh, It was a lot of people, a lot of money. Oh, and of course, Trump did spend some time on the call. Oh, well. Uh, How gracious of him. Still going off about the last election being stolen from him. Uh Uh-huh. And also saying, quote, I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't do better with the Catholic vote. I think now they'd give us a vote. I think we got about 50% of that vote, and yet we did a lot for the Catholic vote, so we'll have to talk to them. (laughs) We're going to have to meet with the Catholics. Oh, my God. (laughs) End quote. (laughs) He is terrible rambler. (laughs) <laughs> people make fun of joe biden for his age but that trump cannot hold a thought and saying something like we're gonna have to meet with the catholics what you're gonna go to the pope that's all right that's an insane thing to say <laughs> he obviously does not does not feel that way uh he, he also went off on on uh, quote, look what I did for the embassy in Jerusalem and what I did with so many other things. Israel's ne- Israel has never had a better friend, and yet I got 25% of the vote. I think they have to get together. There has to be a little bit more unity with the religious groups all represented on this call, end quote. He did so much for Israel, so why aren't the Jews support? Why didn't the Jews support him? Yeah, ouch. <sighs> Nothing he did for Israel was for the sake of of jewish voters in america nope that was all to further evangelical goals of starting armageddon that was the lie that he was sold Uh uh-huh and he still believes it (laughs) what a sucker yeah yeah no if you want the american jewish vote you don't you not just you don't just tout pro-israel that's not enough you know you gotta you know actually have their best interests in mind Maybe. Right. Yeah. Like, like not use slurs behind their backs and stuff, and take actions that help promote protections against discrimination, and not get rid of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny how that happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving on, Lonnie Billard was a English and drama teacher at Charlotte Catholic High School in North Carolina. Okay. For thirteen years, he was. Uh, Won numerous awards. He got Teacher of the Year. He got Inspirational Educator from North Carolina State University. It was never a secret that he was gay until 2014 when he got engaged and posted it on Facebook. Ah, yeah. Him specifically posting that he was going to be marrying a man on Facebook was where the bishop decided that he'd crossed the line and needed to be fired. Right, because everybody in Catholicism knows that you can fuck whatever you want behind closed doors. But don't you dare be open about it. <laughs> Except he'd been open about it the whole time. His boyfriend had he been going from, to 
events at the school the and whole that, time. I'm, and I'm honestly surprised that that didn't yeah. get him excluded. But they were thinking, oh, well, no, this just shows us as being, you know, the opening welcome kind of congregation or not congregation, but um, community communities. Oh, no, he just went too far. Now he's not only is he admitting that he has sex with a man, but he's admitting to wanting to do it for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. No bueno, I guess. Uh, Good for him, though. So after he got fired, yeah, uh, he did go ahead and get married and also sued the school. Yeah. And the diocese sponsoring the school and has now won in court. Oh, good for him. Like a part of me rolls my eyes. It's like, how could you put yourself in that kind of position? If you're this inspirational, wonderful teacher who's won so many awards, get a job where your job is safe. When you've been there for 13 years, you think your job is safe. You th- well, I guess that was where that fell through. But if you're gay, don't work for Catholics. Just don't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. Get a different job. There are plenty out there. No, there, well, there are now. No, everybody. <laughs> uh, but the so the, the 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 judge. This happens so often. This just drives me crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he filed sex discrimination uh, charges with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And it took six years for that to get to a federal court and a judge ruling. Uh, And the ruling was that, yes, that was workplace sex discrimination in violation of the law. And that the federal laws protecting church autonomy and freedom of association do not shield the school from liability from violating Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. Yeah, but it's kind of weird because you're seeing the opposite argument being made kind of all over the place. It's seriously like 50-50 if you're going to win these things. Oh, and this will be appealed. Yes. It probably will go to the Supreme Court. And it will probably lose. And we will see how... Fuck us. Kavanaugh and Gorsuch rule on it. Mm. They both seem to... You know how Barrett's going to rule. Right, yeah. She's a... Yeah, not even a question. Those two in particular are are a question on uh, sex discrimination lawsuits, where the the question will come up when it gets to them is not will they find that it was discrimination on the basis of sex. They've already dis- those two have already voted and written majority opinions saying that that is. Firing somebody for being gay it, or trans is um, sex-based discrimination. Right. Uh, where the question will be is where they'll draw the line on religious freedom of the school. Is it the school's abil- Yeah. Is it the school's right to discriminate? And that's what this is all about. <sighs> and where that one will end up coming down to is, well, if the school has the right to discriminate, does that mean they have carp? Blanche right to discriminate on the basis of sex? Does that mean that, would that mean that religious schools can go back to paying men more than women with the head of household allowance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Like, how far, Backsliding. Are, how far are they going to go? Backsliding. Uh, you think, well, it won't go that far, but there's always somebody waiting in the wings for it to go back that far. Right now, churches can pay however the hell they want. There are no discrimination protections for churches where the question is religious schools do they have to do they fall under being an employer or a ministry and then the next step will be religious hospitals and what happens when all your hospitals within a certain area are religious Uh uh-huh and you don't have a choice but to work for that hospital if you want to work in medical or in a school or in a yeah. Whatever. It's this is why the that wall that separation is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to talk about Texas. Texas's abortion law has gone into effect. Um, this one was allowed to go into effect by the Supreme Court on the grounds that it's different enough than the other bans that it's an open question, which is completely absurd because the way that it's different is anybody can sue. Anyone who helped a woman get an abortion past the six week of gestation mark. Whether they were aware of it or not. Yes. And including can sue the woman who got the abortion. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously. 
Uh, That's this, the main target. This presents presents the possibility where a rapist could sue the woman he raped for ten thousand dollars because she got an abortion as soon as she found out she was pregnant, or the Uber driver that took her to the clinic to get it done, uh-huh. or anybody who donated to Planned Parenthood of Texas, or any other you know known abortion clinic uh it's ridiculous and anytime you have a law that has now it's not an official state telephone number that you can call to turn people in state does not have one of those this is all privately run and they're Mm -hmm. currently getting hit with so much spam they're gonna have to all shut down anyway but the idea of having your neighbor turn in somebody for suspected criminal activity has never ended well right never this isn't expected to end well. Nobody wants it to end well. No, they want it to end. <laughs> they want this to just... It's like, wow, let's just pretend we did not do that. And you know what's great? What is fantastic is what just happened on the other side of the border. Oh, that's the next story. Oh, my God. So we aren't there yet. Oh, come on. Uh, so, so, yeah, the, the, so the plan here is absolutely insane because when these lawsuits start, it's people who in no other realm would have any standing. There is no standing. That's what... Ah. So it creates a whole new level of standing where literally somebody who lives across... Who doesn't even live in your city... Bystanders. Not even by, not You don't even have to physically be there. Somebody who doesn't know you or who you are, well, just knows your name and that something happened... Uh, Knows enough details to file the lawsuit, but it doesn't even have to be somebody who knows you. No. Can sue you for an abortion. People who sit in a church basement every Wednesday night with lists of people uh-huh. that they, of license plates or people that they've suspected of having abortions, they go through and they file out the paperwork and they sue massively because they have nothing better to do with their own fucking lives. Yep. Than to ruin somebody else's. So the Satanic Temple has a plan to get around this. Okay. Uh, They have filed a letter with the Food and Drug Administration uh, arguing that their members in Texas need to have legal access to abortion pills uh, for specifically misoprostol and mifepristone, uh, which is needed by their members for the satanic sacrament of abortion. Under RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It is their firmly held religious belief that a woman should have access to abortion. No questions asked. Yep. Because it is a personal ritual. Bodily autonomy. And, yeah, bodily autonomy. Inalienable bodily autonomy. Which in Texas is a joke anyway, but... (laughs) (laughs) It will be fascinating to see where this goes. Now, I'm sure the FDA is not going to have like their response is probably going to be why are you asking us about this they're just like keep us out of this keep us out of this keep us out of this (laughs) the fda doesn't weigh in on god i can almost feel the headache like the empathy (laughs) headache i have with whoever got that letter (laughs) oh god i do not want to deal with this happy labor day (laughs) but yeah because where rifra comes in is in the defense on the lawsuit yeah, that has nothing to do with the FDA. But they're filing that with the FDA for Shits to giggles. try to get no. I think it's I think it's really just to try to get some paper trail for when they go to bat in court. Yeah. Now, of course, one thing this will not change is the need for people to be able to cross the U.S. Mexico border to get abortions. But thanks to the Mexican Supreme Court, that direction of travel is going to switch. Other way around, maybe. Women in southern Texas, to get access to a safe abortion, will need to go to Mexico. Yes. Where Mexico's Supreme Court has unanimously ruled that criminal penalties for abortion is unconstitutional and has directed the uh, state legislature in Coahulia, uh, which borders Texas, to uh, fix their laws. Oh, because they probably had some pretty severe... Three years in prison and a fine for getting an abortion. Yikes. 
Now, this isn't a, you know, sweeping abortion is legal all over the place, but you can't make it criminal, which basically is like a green light. This is going to, this is Mexico, the Mexican Supreme Court doesn't work the way the U.S. Supreme Court works. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court makes a ruling that something's unconstitutional, then any state that has a law like that, that's automatically null and void. Yeah. In Mexico, they can only rule on a specific law. They can't do big sweeping rulings. Right. But they can create precedent, and then other states will get sued in lower courts, and the lower courts will cite that precedent, and one by one, each and every state, every state's laws will be thrown out. Now, that happened with same-sex marriage in Mexico, and that happened with marijuana. Yeah. And now it's happening with with abortion. Uh which will mean in southern Texas, women will be crossing the border into Mexico to get abortions. Right, because there's nobody who's just pro-abortion. They're pro-safe abortion. Yeah. And if you make it illegal, it becomes unsafe. Yep. Uh, Texas, the land of coat hangers, shall be... I mean, the memes have already started. It's, it's mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. Um, the backlash that they're getting is terrible and terrific. <laughs> oh yeah and we have feedback that wasn't deleted all right uh via email from janice this was in response to episode 422 she wrote great episode oh thank you janice Wait, was i on that one half of it yeah all right half of that was me <laughs> actually after editing more like two-thirds okay <laughs> I love how that works. Yeah. I love uh, that math. So thank you, Janice. Thank no, no, no. The reason why it was after editing, it was more like you were on two thirds was because I have a lot more pauses when I'm solo. And you, once you... those are gone. Uh, it, cuts, it cuts it way down. Yeah. yeah I get that. That's okay. Yeah. Truncation. Yep. And no new patrons. If you want to contact us, you can use the feedback form at atheistnomads.com. You can also use the speak pipe button there. You can send us an email at feedback at atheistnomads.com. I prefer disembodied voices myself. If you want to support the show, you can find out how at atheistnomads.com slash donate. Yeah! Using recurring donations on the per episode basis on Patreon or a one-time donation over PayPal. Uh, And soon you will be able to buy shirts. Or stickers. whatever. Or whatever. Stickers for the little ones. Or your laptop. Or a mug. Or cooler. Just We should just have it with Rocco's face on it. <laughs> <laughs> Those little tongue, dumb tongue sticking out. Oh my god, it would be so cute. All right, Lauren, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, that last Mountain Dew really, get, really did it. And listeners, remember, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.